Are you buckled in? Because today we've got a marathon for you, but it is going to be worth it because we are sharing with you our best one pot meals. We have a ton of them. So many, because we don't love dishes and one pot equals less dishes. to be simple. And if you can do it in one pot and not have to dirty extra dishes, it's even better. A round of applause for less dishes, please. So we are gonna get started on our first recipe because like I just said, this is a marathon. The first recipe that we are doing is our one pot taco spaghetti. And the reason I'm sharing it first is because it is the first one pot I ever tried. And oh, that's right. ever since then, it's just been a love affair <laughs> with the one pots. Into your large resealable freezer bag, you are going to add some browned ground beef, minced onion, taco seasoning, and rotel. You're gonna squish that all around to combine it. You're gonna get as much air as you can out of the bag because air causes your freezer burn. Then you're gonna seal it. Then in a quart size freezer bag, you're gonna add some shredded cheese. You can use uh, cheddar or a Tex-Mex blend. Then you're gonna seal that and staple the bags together above the seal. On the day you go to make this, you thaw it and you're gonna just dump the large bag contents into a large stovetop pot or a large skillet. And then here's the best part. You're gonna add your spaghetti noodles, but you don't cook them first. You don't have to take out a pot and a strainer and dirty those up. You don't have to waste water and you don't have to waste the goodness of this sauce because the sauce flavors are actually going to kind of go into your pasta as it cooks and oh, it's just so good. Once it's boiling, you're gonna turn that heat down to low, cover it and simmer it for about 15 minutes, sprinkle it with that cheese and stir it to melt into the pasta. Oh, it's so good, right? It's flavorful. And mine is a little bit more flavorful than the ones that we make for Christy's family because for mine, I use a veggie beef, but it's a Mexican flavored veggie beef that I do in this one. So it even has more punch. Do you remember the weird look I gave you when you're like, we're gonna do one pot taco spaghetti. And I'm like, Sharla, what goes on inside your head? <laughs> Tacos with spaghetti, one pot, I didn't understand, and now I'm a fan. I, you know, she has this way of introducing things to me in such a way that makes me really like them. This next recipe is one pot skillet lasagna, and you are thinking, are you kidding me? How is that even layered? It's okay, it's like a lazy lasagna. You know what I mean? It's all just melded and flavorful in your skillet. So you do need a fairly good sized skillet for this sucker because that is a lot of food and it is amazing. In our large freezer bag, we're going to add in our ground brown sausage. Charlotte likes to use the spicy Italian and our family typically uses the mild Italian. Although I have to say, we made ours this week and our bags got mixed up. And I knew because it was much spicier than normal, which I like, I don't mind, but there is fennel in this and I don't like fennel very much. And so Charlotte puts the regular amount of fennel in and we always do mine fennel light. Right. And I suspected that it was hers cause it was hot and I got a piece of fennel in my mouth and I'm like, Definitely it, hers. Definitely Charlotte. She texted me and like, our bags got mixed up. And she's like, I already know. I know because we, we had, had the mild, mild warrant warrant for Charlotte. She's so sad. No. So after we put in our mild or spicy Italian ground sausage that's been browned and cooled, we're going to add in minced garlic. Now we use just minced garlic right from a jar. We add in minced onions, some salt and pepper, oregano, basil, rosemary, that pesky fennel, and some crushed tomatoes. Then in another bag, we're going to add a combination of ricotta cheese, a bit of Parmesan cheese, and some shredded mozzarella. We're going to get all of the air out of those bags, we're going to seal them up, and then we're gonna staple them together. Make sure you staple above the seal, so you're not putting holes in the important part of your bag, but then on the day of cooking, that's all together. That's the nice part. So we're gonna staple these, 
Get them into your freezer, lay them flat to freeze. On the day of cooking, after we have thawed them, we are going to dump this big bag into our giant skillet that we talked about. And we're going to add in four cups of water and we're going to stir it and bring it to a boil. And then the recommendation in the recipe is to add small shell pasta, about a pound of it, kind of like the spaghetti, right into the skillet. But at my house, I had seen at our bulk store that they had these little tiny lasagna noodles that were about the size of a matchbook. Like they were not even half the size of a matchbook. And so that's what I used with mine because I thought it would look really pretty. And it did. You add that in and you stir it and cook it and you keep the lid on and you do all the things until it's fully cooked, like 20-ish minutes. And then that cheese bag. You've been waiting for the mm -hmm. cheese bag. You're going to sprinkle that around on top of your lasagna and then let it melt and then you're gonna eat it. The first time I made this, I also had some spinach at home, so I wilted some spinach in on top of it, which was lovely. And then when we made it the other night, I didn't have spinach to put in it, but we had fennel, so that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> really, there's only fennel, half a teaspoon spinach. of fennel. I really shouldn't complain, but I looked at it, I even looked at the bag and I'm like, I can see the fennel in this. We don't usually put that much in mine. I should have known right then. Yep. Yep. We could have done swapsies. <laughs> Except you had already cooked both of yours. Yes, I had because they've been very popular. They're popular. They're really, really good. Yeah. And we kind of like anything with that lasagna flavoring, let's be honest. And if it's a lazy lasagna, we're even bigger fans. And if you were new around here, our favorite lasagna item isn't even lasagna itself. It's lasagna soup. Oh, and it is so, so good. good. And when I was inventing the one pot skillet lasagna, like it's the inspiration from the soup that created this. And it's because the soup has fennel, that this has fennel, even though again, we put less in Christie's bag. And that's the great thing about freezer meals is that you can adapt them. Make to them exactly for your family. You yes, absolutely. How you like it and how your family likes it. If you love fennel, you can add more. Mm -hmm. Now this next one, is perhaps our most popular with our viewers and our readers and our club members and that is our one pot Cajun chicken pasta. Whew, is this one good? And it was an invention kind mm -hmm. of by necessity. Yes, because I had gotten, I didn't have the one ingredient. These cans, and I don't even know how I ended up with them. It was probably a whim purchase, which isn't like me, so they were probably on sale but like a diced tomato with spicy red pepper. That's just what it's called. And I probably got them at some point thinking like, I can invent something with these. And which little did you know. I normally invent things, but this was sort of a necessity thing, like Christy was saying, because I was planned, I had planned a, a different version of the recipe and it had fire roasted tomatoes, which I didn't have any of. <laughs> So. And I was here by myself doing like the test version in the kitchen and I don't, you weren't here or you were at a meeting, at an appointment. At an appointment. Yeah. And so I'm trying to text her, but she's in an appointment. So she's not answering. And I'm like, I don't know. This was also the same day that I couldn't find the Cajun seasoning. And so <laughs> I dug around in her spice cupboard until I made my, I just Googled one and I made my own Cajun seasoning and it was very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that was an exercise in all things invention <laughs> that was like making do with what you have which is another great thing about freezer meals <laughs> you really really can so the new and improved recipe because we never made the old original recipe and like you know but the recipe that uh, that you all know and love is into your large freezer bag you're gonna add some boneless skinless chicken breasts that are cooked and cubed then you're gonna add Cajun seasoning you can either make your own or you can use a store-bought blend some red pepper that's sliced yellow peppers that's sliced purple onions that are sliced some minced garlic again from a jar some chicken broth diced tomatoes with spicy red pepper some heavy cream, cream cheese. I think you're kind of getting the sense of why this is such a delicious recipe here. <laughs> a little bit of parsley and some salt and pepper. Squish all of this together in the bag to combine it, get as much air as you can out of that and seal it. And then you're gonna freeze it. I do wanna mention that 
if you have a lot of meals in your freezer or if you have a very small freezer and can't fit much in there, then we recommend that you leave out the chicken broth and you can just keep that in your pantry and add a note onto your label that reminds you to add the chicken broth on the day you go to cook this. That way your bag will be thinner and it'll take up less space in your freezer. When you do go to make this, you thaw it and then you add that whole bag into a really large skillet, bring it to a boil, and of course add the chicken broth if you haven't done that already. And then you're gonna add your raw penne right into there. And you just cook it, stirring it here and there. You do wanna stir these quite frequently because you don't want your pasta to stick to the bottom of your pot. And when your pasta is tender, so like 15 to 20 minutes, you can eat it. If you want, you can top it with some red pepper flakes and Parmesan cheese. This one, like, yeah, you can serve it with a side salad. It goes well with a Caesar salad. It's it, it's good enough to serve to company, but no matter how you serve it, you're gonna love it. You really, really are. This tortellini sausage skillet has been a favorite of both of our families for a long time. Partly because it's so easy to put together and partly because it is so easy to make on the day of cooking. And it's so hearty. First you're going to take Italian sausage that's in the casing and you're going to slit the casing open and then squish out little tiny Italian sausage meatballs. And then you're going to bake those in the oven at about 350 for 25 minutes and then you are going to let them cool and then you're going to add them into your freezer bag. Then you are going to add in some diced green pepper yellow pepper and red pepper. You're going to add in sliced mushrooms, some diced onion, and some pasta sauce or red sauce if you are in the club, and the tortellini. Now this is a full bag. If you made this in a bowl and transferred it into the bag, that would be totally okay because sometimes it gets a little busy there in the bag. You're going to get out all the excess air that you can. You're going to seal it up and freeze it. On the day of cooking, you're going to empty that large freezer bag into that giant skillet. You're going to add half a cup of water, just kind of mix it in and heat it over medium heat, medium high heat, really for 10 minutes. It is going to be cooked because that pasta is fresh pasta, right? I mean, it's been frozen, but it's not like the dried pasta that has to boil for a long time. Fresh pasta cooks up in no time. It is like one and done. These are the meals that you want for the days where your kids get home from school and you are immediately eating and leaving the house to go to soccer. You know, where you're... This is the amount of time mm -hmm. it would take you to change from your work clothes into your, you know, taking kids to soccer clothes. You come back to the kitchen, you scoop up and eat really quickly and, or put it on a to-go plate and take it in the vehicle. Like, <laughs> it's fast. It is really fast. And then you are the mom that kind of has it together while the other moms are throwing granola bars at their kids in the back seat. Yeah, we've been those moms, we, we, that's why we we've been it. both. <laughs> we've been both of those moms and we can kind of laugh about it a little bit. And it does feel really good to know that you have one complete meal in a bag on your stove and it is really hearty and great. Yeah, this is one that we always take on ski trips with us because the kids come in from the hill and they're so darn hungry mm -hmm. and it's just hearty. And again, I don't know when they're going to be coming in off the hill. So when they do come in, in like I can get this on the stove, and by the time they have their ski boots off and their tubes and their, like all their layers right. off, it's ready. It's perfect. Totally. My sister-in-law texted me about a month ago, and she has started using the club to make all their meals, and they are a gluten-free family. So she was like, I've I picked out the taco spaghetti, made it, it was in my freezer, took it out and realized, I don't know if this is gonna work with gluten-free pasta. And I was like, mm, I don't actually know. We haven't done we it. Haven't tested it. I was like, well, you know, try it. And you might have to add a little bit more liquid, more, pa like you're gonna have to experiment, sorry. She's reported back. So she said she used a full 340 gram box of the gluten-free spaghetti, which is more than we call four of the regular spaghetti. And then she had to add an extra cup of water. And I'm not surprised because she added more pasta. Mm -hmm. But she said that it turned out so well um, that 
The gluten-free pasta does break apart a little bit more easily than your regular pasta, but it still worked. It was super flavorful, and she's kind of adding it to their list of favorites. So, Oh, very nice. That's good to know that these still do work with gluten-free pasta. You just might have to play around a little tiny bit with your amounts and see what works for you. Anyway, that's just a little aside, and that was like from three recipes ago, but as I'm about to tell you this next recipe, I was like, let's give them the gluten-free story. <laughs> Because if you clicked into this video and then you're like, oh, it doesn't apply to me because I'm gluten-free, it could. This one pot chicken and mushroom pasta was a complete experiment. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Christy and I are neighbors and friends and every three months for over 12 years, mm -hmm. we have been getting together to make each of our families three months worth of freezer meals. And when we do those, we call them mega sessions and now we film them. Uh, we'll put one up there and down in the description below. I'll just choose some random <laughs> one, but we always make over a hundred meals. And so with that many meals, we do a lot of prep. And sometimes we prep a little bit extra of some ground beef or some chicken just because it was a good price. Sometimes we end up changing our mind about some meals as we're going. So whatever the case is, we always end up with extra prepped ingredients at the end. And then I just invent things with what we have left over. Sometimes those inventions have ended up being some of our new favorite recipes. Absolutely. And sometimes they've been complete and utter flops. <laughs> so. It's true. Um, but I think we've had probably more hits than misses. Definitely, or I wouldn't keep doing it. Yeah. And this one, when we made it as the invention, which was two or three mega sessions, or two mega sessions ago, it then was so good that we purposely put it into the last mega session mm -hmm. as like a, okay, we're doing this for real this time. And I had tweaked it a little tiny bit, but basically this is how it was when I invented it. So you're gonna add into your freezer bag some cooked and cubed chicken, sliced mushrooms, sliced purple onion, minced garlic, heavy cream, thyme, paprika, and salt and pepper. Then in a quart size freezer bag, you're going to put some shredded Parmesan cheese, get the air out of both bags, seal them, staple them together above the seal, and freeze them. When you go to make this, you're going to put the contents from your large bag into that large skillet or stovetop pot, along with four mm. cups of chicken broth. You're gonna bring that to a boil, and then you're gonna stir in some pasta. And once your pasta is done, you're gonna stir in that bag of Parmesan cheese and you're gonna stir in a cup of fresh spinach and just allow that spinach to wilt and your cheese to melt a little bit. Serve it like that and it's delicious. It really was a wonderful invention and we have made it like you said, a few times, and in that last mega session, it was one of those recipes that didn't get recorded when we were filming the overheads, mm -hmm. and so I had to make another one. So when I was digging around this morning, having a look to see what you know if we needed to do another mega session or not, I saw that I had another one, and I squeaked a bit in glee <laughs> because I thought we were done with it for now, and I'm like, oh, this is... Like, it's a really, really good one. It's just savory. It's not fancy food. It's just savory and good. Now, if you don't like mushrooms, then you could pick something else to put in place or omit them. But it just, we had a lot of mushrooms that session because the invention one, we had extra mushrooms because there it was, was a, a math problem. Mushroom math issue. Mushroom math is a problem. Mushroom math is hard. It's harder <laughs> than onion math. That's for sure. This one pot bolognese is again, very, very good. It is one of Charlotte's oldest son's um, all-time favorite freezer meal probably and he's moving out soon so I think she's probably got some packed away for him yes yes you do and it is super simple to get put together and super simple to make in a large freezer bag we're going to add our ground beef that's been browned and cooled we're adding in some minced garlic minced onion two cups of pasta sauce or red sauce if you have it some diced tomatoes three cups of chicken broth that's it. We're going to mix those around. Again, you could skip the chicken broth if you wanted and add that to your label for the day of cooking. And you wanna seal it and freeze it. On the day of cooking, you are going to thaw it. You're going to add it to a large skillet or a pot. 
If you haven't added the chicken broth, now is the time to do that and you bring it to a boil and you are going to add in some penne pasta. And again, get it in there, stir it as it cooks so it doesn't stick to the bottom. It will absorb all of those wonderful juices from that liquid and you have this instant meal that is just dynamite. With these one pot meals, most of them are pasta because that is something really easy to make. We also have some one pot things that are rice where the rice cooks up right in them, but those go in a casserole dish in the oven. And so even though I could have justified mm -hmm. putting them in this video, I wanted to be true to the pot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it has to go in the pot. I'm a Fair enough. follower. I was looking through our recipes and I thought, you know, the Southern style ground beef casserole could also, because it's made in a skillet, even though it's called a casserole, mm -hmm. it could be close, but it doesn't have the rice or the pasta mixed in. No. So I, because at first I thought, oh, we should add that in. And I'm like, no, we are not meeting all of the categories that Charlotte has selected for this. Right. So to me, one, everyone has their own definitions of, of all different things, actually, as I'm finding out from YouTube comments. But anyway, amen to that. <laughs> um, but for me, my definition of a one pot is that it's one pot or skillet, like one stovetop thingamajiggy, and that inside it something that would normally need a separate pot cooks up right so this is my definition not sure if that's anyone else in the world's definition but that's my definition and since it's my youtube channel that's that's what we're doing i remember finding my very first one pot recipe i want to say was like from years ago and it was a um a thai noodle dish of some sort and it was a one it said one pot and it was it had shrimp and it was spicy I should go find that. I wonder if we could freezer mealize that. I bet you we could. Probably. And it was very, very good, but it was a complete lie because I felt lied to only be, be, I'm sure, yes, in the end it was all one pot. It was something that also had many other dishes. Like I, I had to mix things in this bowl before I added it in. And, and so it was talked about being one pot and it truly was one pot to your definition, but there was other dishes and I just kind of felt like, well, this wasn't really helpful in the dish category at all because there were several bowls like that I thought, really, did we have to do it this way? But actually what I like about our one pot meals is really they're going into the bag mm -hmm. and there's very seldom, if any, that we have to do any mixing or other than a cutting board from cutting some onions or peppers. Yeah, it's really not a lot of dishes. It's really not a lot of dishes. No, it's like to the true one pot Yes. you know, definition. And I appreciate that so much because we, I feel quite confident in saying it's a one pot meal. All of these have been pasta where the pasta cooks right in. And now we're going to share with you a gnocchi one pot meal because sometimes you have to cook your gnocchi in another pot and then, you know, you drain it and then you might even use a strainer. And so now you've got two dishes plus maybe the lid. You might have three dishes. I'm making it sound like so awful. Anyway, <laughs> um, however, this is truly one dish, one pot. So this gnocchi sausage skillet into your large freezer bag, you're going to add some ground Italian sausage that's browned, mild or spicy, your preference. And you're gonna add a pound of potato gnocchi. Now for this, you wanna use the refrigerated potato gnocchi because again, we are gonna cook it right up in this sauce. Then you're gonna add a chopped onion, some minced garlic, some diced tomatoes, a little bit of chicken broth so you can just add it right in your bag. It won't take up a lot of space. A bit of pepper and some basil. Then in a quart size freezer bag, you're gonna add some shredded mozzarella cheese and some shredded Parmesan. You're going to staple those bags together after you get the air out of them and seal them. And then you're going to freeze this and on the day you cook it, thaw it, put the large bag ingredients in a skillet on medium high heat for five to six minutes. Yep, that's it. Then you're gonna stir in three to four cups, lots and lots of spinach until it's wilted, and then top it with the cheese, 
cover it and cook it for another about four minutes. So in around 10, 12 minutes, you have dinner. You really do. It's another great one for those nights you have to run off to soccer practice. <laughs> Keeping with the gnocchi theme, the sun-dried tomato gnocchi is a reinvention from one of the inventions that Charlotte had that did turn out to be a bit of a flop, but it has been redeemed and it is wonderful. And we actually and had it for lunch today. Today, and because we were gonna be filming this video right now for you, and I had just made this last week to freeze because not only do we test the meals, mm -hmm. we first test freezing them and we make sure that they're in the freezer for a good while. like not a few hours and then serve it. Right. Like, you know, at least overnight, like they are like <laughs> frozen. frozen solid. <laughs> and so this one's been in there for a week and, and I was like, Oh, it's in this video. So we have to actually test it today. Mm -hmm. So we made it for lunch. And when you hear how quickly it cooks up, you're going to realize like why this was a good one <laughs> also to have, you know, for our lunch. Cause it took no time at all, but it was, an experiment and I needed to know before I told you <laughs> that you should make this. And, and it's delicious and so here we're going to tell you how to make it. We're going to add our refrigerated gnocchi to our freezer bag. We're going to add in some sun-dried tomatoes that have been patted dry or you can buy the bag of dried tomatoes and sometimes if they're the big chunks we like to slice them up. We're going to add in some vegetable broth, some heavy cream, some grated parmesan cheese, some minced garlic, basil, red pepper flakes, and salt and pepper. We're gonna mix those up right into the bag and we're going to seal that up and then we're going to add some mozzarella cheese into a medium sized bag, that's a quart sized bag, seal that up and then we're going to staple those together so that they are together on the day that we go to cook. On the day that we're cooking this, we are going to thaw it and we're going to add that large bag right into our skillet. We're going to bring it up to a boil. Really, it is like minutes. minutes. <laughs> If you've done 10 minutes, it might be a little too long. We're going to sprinkle that mozzarella cheese on there, let it get melty and ooey gooey, and serve. We had talked about this today as we were eating it, and we thought about other ways that it could be modified to suit your family. It is a vegetarian meal, so I mentioned to Sharla that we at our house would probably use this as a side, but like with the heavy cream in it, and the, it's very rich as well, but it could be a main. Sharla would use it as a main. We could add chicken to it. You could add bacon to it. You could throw peas in it. Like it has a lot of potential for variety mm -hmm. to make it suit you as much as you want. And that again is the beauty of freezer meals. Yeah, absolutely. If you were to do chicken with this, I would do cooked cube chicken mm -hmm. when you make it so that you're not worrying about the chicken being cooked. Is enough it cooked enough and, in you know, 10 minutes? All, all the things. Um, and you don't want your gnocchi to overcook. So, Anyway, I, I do think this is a really versatile recipe and it is club worthy. So it, you will be able to find it in the club. There's no link for it down below just yet because it yeah. is brand new. Yeah. We, brand new. <laughs> brand new. So <laughs> hang in there. It will end up in the club. It will end up on the main site eventually. And for those of you that don't know what the club is, the Freezer Meals 101 Club allows you to take our tried and true freezer recipes, create your custom meal plans, adjust the serving size if you like to larger or smaller and make as many of each meal as you want and then you can print off your shopping list your prep list and those really handy printable labels with the cooking instructions and the date the other thing about the club is we have it set up so there's a lot of different filters so you can filter by protein or by course or diet things like if you are gluten free and one of the things with that is we also have it set up for these handy keywords. We've got lots of keywords and we keep adding more just as we hear how you like to use it and what works best for you. So we've got things like Five one pot or less oh, kid friendly and then yes we one, have one one, one pot. pot so if you type one pot in because you love less dishes too it'll populate all of our one pot recipes yes it so, does and sheet pan again less dishes totally <laughs> This one pot pasta puttanesca is another vegetarian one, but it is one that we would not recommend you adding anything to because it's perfect. It is 
Perfect. And I want to put a caveat on vegetarian because it is meatless, mm -hmm. but not technically vegetarian because it does have anchovy paste in it. You can make it without the anchovy paste if you're vegan or vegetarian. We don't recommend that because the anchovy paste is really what sort of defines pasta puttanesca. And if you want the true flavors of a puttanesca, you need the anchovy paste. Uh, if you know of a substitute for anchovy paste that would give a similar type of flavor, let us know in the comments because that is a question we've had before. And absolutely, it's, we, we always like to learn new things too. So into your large freezer bag, you're going to add some olive oil, anchovy paste, minced garlic, San Marzano tomatoes that have been broken up either with your fingers or with uh, mix and chop. Kalamata olives that are pitted and halved or just pitted is fine. Some capers, red pepper flakes, vegetable broth if you're making it vegetarian or you could use chicken broth. Salt and pepper. Just squish that all together. Get that, you know, air out, sealed in your freezer. And then on the day that you go to make this, oh, you're in for a treat. Thaw it. Cook it again in a pot. <laughs> this is a pretty sound like a broken record. Uh, and you're gonna add your spaghetti noodles right into here. Gonna let this simmer as those cook. When you're done, you wanna add some fresh basil and shredded Parmesan cheese. If you're me, you're gonna add some red pepper flakes because I like things a little spicy. This is true. And I would say Charlotte adds red pepper flakes to probably 90% of the food that you cook. Yes. Because even if it is spicy, you like it spicier. I do. And did you know that spice tolerance is one of those things that you can increase? And so I've worked for a lot of years to increase mine and it's pretty impressive. <laughs> You know how I mentioned earlier about the spicy versus mild Italian sausage and my son and I were sitting there eating the lasagna skillet and we're like, this is a little spicy, hey? I don't mind spice at all, but my kids are taking their time about it. And both of them, well, my son was there right then and he goes, it is a little spicy, but it's okay. Like he's, he's starting to, his nose is running, but yeah. he's like, but it's good, it's okay. <laughs> And my daughter is getting there. So, you know, maybe one day we will be able to get spicy Italian for everybody. That would make things easier. That would make our lives a lot easier when it comes to doing prep. And I was thinking about complaining about that lady and her one pot, and it wasn't a true one pot. And, and you might say, well, Christy, you're browning your Italian sausage and you're cubing your cooked chicken. So there is prep, but I categorize that differently in my head as being prep. Because on the day you go to cook this, it's one pot. <laughs> and for us, I mean, if you're only making one or two meals ahead, then yes, you're going to have dirtied your skillet for browning yeah. your sausage or your like your hamburger or whatever. But if you're making a hundred plus meals at a time, we're doing the prep in these large quantities. And you know, if you can imagine making, let's say, 30 ground beef meals, but you cooked all that ground beef. We do ours on a cookie sheet at that point because there's, you know, there's, there's so, much. so much of it. But, you know, you're dirtying one cookie sheet for 30 meals. Like, right. It's so different and so worth it. So, yes, you could, you could nitpick and say, You well, could nitpick. <laughs> I was nitpicking my own comment after I said it, and I'm like, Ah, but we are, we do the prep, right? And I just separate it in my head because prep day is one day, assembly day is the other, and, and then cooking day is another again. So I just have it all separate in my head. And honestly, cooking day might be three months later. And so you have forgotten the work you did for prep and assembly. <laughs> you are just trying to get out the door to soccer practice and you're just grateful for this skillet meal. <laughs> You are just so thankful that your freezer still has meals in it. And like Christy said earlier, she was counting her meals to see like how many are left. And she and I have been talking about like, do we do uh, our mega session next month or the month after? And so we're just at that stage of trying to figure out like, how much longer can we last? Right. So we're kind of getting down to it, but stay tuned. And speaking of that, if you're interested in watching our next, like they're, they're, they are, they're two a lot hours of fun, long, but they are, 
clear a thing. If you're interested in watching our next mega session, then hit subscribe and click that little notification bell so that it lets you know when that video drops. One pot creamy chicken pasta is different than one pot Cajun chicken pasta. And honestly, when we made these initially, they were like in the same week. And so we would get them confused a little bit, but the Cajun one was just so good. The creamy one is really, really good too. Don't get me wrong, but we would uh, kind of confuse the, the titles a little bit. I kind of felt sad for the creamy, the creamy ch chicken pasta. Like I did because the Cajun chicken pasta outshined it to the point where I was even like, eh, like, do I even want to put this in the club? And then I'm like, once we had them like at separate times, like very far Instead apart, of one day, then the next. Yeah, then I was like, whoa. It is so it's good. So good. But I did feel badly for it because it was being compared just like you should stuffed never animals. Com yeah. Compared. You did that with your stuffed animals, didn't you? <laughs> you had favorites, but you played with them all equally so they didn't feel bad. Well, you, you never want. I know I to did. I did. I know I did. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we make the one pot creamy chicken pasta, not to make it feel good, but kind of to make it feel good. No, we just really love it. And it is another one. And if you don't like Cajun seasoning, if then, Cajun isn't your flavor, then this is your pasta. And this is a more, I mean, that one is Cajun seasoning. This one has more Italian flavoring and it is creamier. Yes. Yeah. And maybe even a little richer, right? Mm -hmm. In our large freezer bag, we are going to add in our boneless, skinless chicken breasts that have been cooked and cubed. We're going to add in a diced onion, minced garlic, Italian seasoning, salt and pepper, parsley, diced tomatoes that have been drained, some chicken broth. Again, you can make the note on your label to add the chicken broth later and some heavy cream. That's it for the big bag. And then in a medium size or a quart size bag, we are going to add in mozzarella cheese that's been shredded and some Parmesan cheese. We're going to get all of the air out of those, seal them up, staple them together and freeze them. And then on the day of cooking, you're going to let it thaw. You're going to put the contents of that big bag into your giant skillet. You bring it to a boil and then you're going to add your pasta and you stir occasionally to cook. Give it, you know, it, it might stick to the bottom and give it that 20 minutes or so, 15, 20 minutes, and then top it with that cheese and let it melt. This is wildly good. Now this one, because of the richness, I really recommend that you serve this with a salad. Yeah. <laughs> it just lightens it up and just completes the meal. You don't have to. And we're totally good with you going and grabbing like a salad in a bag. Absolutely. You know, <laughs> you know make it as easy on yourself as you can. But yes, this is one that I would say, grab a salad. This is also one I would happily serve co company. Definitely. One that I would not serve company but would totally serve my family is our pizza <laughs> casserole. <laughs> Fair enough. We've been making this for just years and years and years and years, and it's not elevated and it's not fancy. It is humble. It, it, it is. That's the right word. It's for humble. It. It's humble, but I don't want to say, but it's edible, but I mean, <laughs> but it works, right? Your yeah. kids will eat it. Yep. And it works. It gets everyone fed. And this it's is another good one for coming off the ski hill for yeah. real. It gets still hearty and it's big. It goes a long way. Okay. So this is our pizza casserole, which when I said we've been making it for years and years, I mean like over a decade easily. I might've been making this for 15 years and I used to always do it as a slow cooker recipe and then discovered once we started doing one pots that this totally works as a one pot. So you can do it either way. Into your large freezer bag, you're gonna add some cubed ham, grated Parmesan cheese, shredded mozzarella cheese, minced onion, diced green pepper, tomato sauce, Italian seasoning, little splash of red pepper flakes, and that's it. If you want, you can put your pasta in a separate bag and staple it to the bag. You could do that with any of these, but you know, you can just also keep your pasta in your pantry and have it ready. You're gonna freeze this, and then on the day you go to make this, if you're gonna do it as a one pot, 
Then you're gonna add some extra water into your pot when you add your ingredients from the bag. And then you're just gonna stir that pasta right up in there. And uh, that's it, it's one pot sausage and vegetable pasta is another one that you could serve your family or company. I do like it because it has so many vegetables in it. And it's very nice, like it is such a complete meal. You don't need the salad even. It is just a wonderful, complete meal. In your large freezer bag, you're going to add a ring of garlic sausage that has been sliced. We're going to add in sliced red pepper, orange pepper, and some sliced red onion. We're going to add in diced tomatoes, some salt and pepper, some red pepper flakes, some chicken broth, again, you can add it now or add it later. And then in another bag, you're going to add that mozzarella cheese that's been shredded and staple these bags together. On the day of cooking, you are again going to add that large bag after it's been thawed into your large skillet. Add your chicken broth if you haven't already. Add in your pasta. Give it a little stir after you bring it to a boil and let it cook. And you can add that mozzarella cheese on or you can dish it and add the mozzarella cheese individually on the servings, which is kind of a little fancier touch if you were having company. But my kids, no, it's right on the right on the skillet. Yeah, and for me, we add it to half of the skillet because oh, right. some of my kids are lactose intolerant and some love cheese. So we and, just compromise. And this one's lighter because it doesn't have the heavy cream, mm -hmm. right? So there is variety in the one pot world, I promise. Now this next one is like speaking of variety. Mm -hmm. This is new and tried and true because we have frozen it, made it, and so good. This is our beef enchilada pasta. Oh, now because I don't actually eat beef. I did make this with the Mexican veggie beef. So I fried that up because I just like the texture better when it's fried, but you could totally do this with ground beef. That's kind of the intention is to do it with ground beef. So either way, you're going to put that into your large freezer bag. You're gonna add some minced onion, minced garlic, some taco seasoning, and two cans of enchilada sauce. You're going to squish that all together in the bag, get out as much air as you can and seal it. Then in another quart size bag, you're going to add some shredded Tex-Mex or cheddar cheese. Staple that bag to the other bag above the seal, freeze them. Now, I just made this on the weekend and one of our sons had a friend over and his friend was like, oh, like we had never met him before. So <laughs> you could tell, like he, he ate it happily and he, he said positive things about it, but you never really know. Although I was eating it and it was good. So I knew it was probably, he probably liked it. But then he was sort of like, would it be okay if I had seconds? Like, Aww. you know, cause he's a little nervous cause he doesn't know us yet. And we're just like, help yourself, right? <laughs> anyway, and so it was quite cute. Now. For this, you can use any kind, like a penne type size pasta mm -hmm. and stir that in there. It cooks up in the sauce. Now you are gonna wanna add some chicken broth or vegetable broth to this so that you get enough liquid so that your pasta will cook up in there. And then at the very end, you add that cheese and stir it through. There you go, you've got beef enchilada pasta. Wonderful. You know, when you mentioned about your son's friend that was like, wow, can I have more? My daughter has occasionally, like if we have a lot of leftovers of something for some reason, my daughter will take it for lunch and sometimes she'll say, can I take it from my other friend too? Because she really likes your cooking. <laughs> and so if we have it, yes, absolutely. Go ahead, leftovers for everybody, use it up. So cute. Spinach artichoke one pot pasta is dynamite. I don't know if you know this, but we have a spinach artichoke quesadilla that Charlotte invented and it was, it was, it was just a stab in the dark. It, sometimes, since we're talking about pasta, sometimes you throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. And this one stuck and it was just so good. And we, we went through this phase of where we just made it over and over and over again because we just had to eat it. But I was right around the time that we were also doing a lot of one pots. And she's like, I wonder if we can make spinach artichoke one pot pasta. And I'm like, yes, please. <laughs> and you did. And I did. 
Yes, here it is. In our large bag, we are going to add our artichoke hearts that have been drained and chopped. We're going to add in diced onions, some salt and pepper, red pepper flakes, vegetable broth, or you could use water if you wanted. And then that is it for that bag. You're going to seal it up and in another smaller bag, you're going to add your shredded mozzarella cheese. Then you're going to seal that up, staple them, into the freezer with them. On the day of cooking, you are going to need your pasta, but you are also going to need some fresh spinach. That is right on the label, so it's not a surprise for you. When you look at it, you're like, oh, I'm gonna look at this and say, oh, I need some fresh spinach. I guess it'll be a tomorrow thing because I have to go pick some up. I have totally done that and that is okay. Or if you're super organized and you are a meal planner, we know a few of you out there, where you pull all of your freezer meals for the week and plan the rest of your shopping list around that, you'll already have it because mm -hmm. you are organized, much more organized than me, and I'm pretty organized. You're gonna need the fresh spinach. That's all I'm saying. On the day of cooking, you're going to thaw your bag, get it into the large skillet. You're going to bring it to a boil and add in your pasta. And once it's been cooked, you it's time to add your spinach and you're going to let it wilt and then sprinkle your mozzarella cheese on top of that and then serve. Do you know that we have so many good, like good enough to make it into this video one pot meals that my tea's gotten cold? My tea has gotten cold. I, I will finish it because I'm committed, but I agree. <laughs> so again, thank you for sticking with us. Last one. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Celebrate by hitting subscribe. <laughs> this is, I may have saved one of the best for last. I can't say the best because so many so of many these. So many are so good. But this is our one pot creamy spinach rigatoni. <sighs> it's like comparing yeah. children. I, like, oh, <laughs> kind of. Kind of. You know, this one was made because there is a website that we love, we, we love the creator of the website, we just, and we love her ideas and her recipes. The website's called Make Ahead Meal Mom, and you can, you know, check that out. She is also in our Facebook group and adds wonderful tidbits because she has so much freezer cooking knowledge. And so Candy from Make Ahead Meal Mom has this sausage rigatoni bake that oh at least once or twice a year we will make four so that each of our family ends up with two it's but it's a, also the one that i make in between because yeah. it is that good and it feeds so many but it's a bit of an endeavor because mm -hmm. it's a layered pasta so you know you've you've got your prepped ingredients and stuff but then you're making it in a dish and you're layering this and then putting the sauce and then cheese and then it's kind of like a lasagna type right. of idea it's worth it. Worth it. Like, you should check that out. However, we don't always have enough time, and lots of us don't have enough time to be making layered pastas on the regular. <laughs> so this was inspired by that, and a lot of the flavors from that is how I created this. It's not, I don't wanna say it's not as good, because it's really good, but that, it, it, like, it's just different. Yeah, and you can't get a layered pasta mm -hmm. in a one pot. You just can't. So no. you should do both maybe. I don't know. I don't we have a lasagna. Try this <laughs> if you don't have a lot of time. Yes. Um try that for when you have more time. And maybe try this to see if you like the flavors and if you want to invest in that. How about that? Okay. So we're gonna put our ground Italian sausage that's browned, either spicy or mild, again, in our large freezer bag. We're gonna add some chicken broth, heavy cream, minced garlic, Italian seasoning, tomato sauce, or you can use our red sauce if you're in the club, some salt and pepper, and red pepper flakes. You're going to just squish that together in the bag. Get out your excess air, seal it, and freeze it. On the day you cook this, you wanna thaw it, bring it to a boil, add your pasta. Now, I'm gonna make another caveat here. This is rigatoni, so it's quite a large pasta noodle. And because of that, sometimes I find that I have to watch and maybe add a little bit more liquid. So you could mm -hmm. add more chicken broth 
or a little bit more water. I don't have to do that with our other one pots, but because of the rigatoni being so large, I sometimes do. It helps if you keep it covered in between stirring it, but this is one that you're gonna wanna stir a little bit more often. Again, because of the size of that pasta, it's gonna stick to the bottom more easily. When your pasta's done cooking, then you can add some fresh spinach if you want and allow that to wilt, and that is it. And so. anything that you can add spinach to to make it healthier, do it, because there's a lot of calcium and iron and all the good things that are in spinach. Whew. Yeah. That, that is it. That is it. We didn't actually even make these today, although we cooked up the, mm -hmm. the gnocchi sun-dried tomato one. We didn't actually assemble these today. We just are telling you about them and we're tired. So we don't recommend you making all of these all at once. We recommend you picking a few and doubling those ones, deciding that you love one pot. Mm -hmm and uh kind of the rest is history <laughs> exactly thank you very much for joining us today and happy cooking bye my kids are fans of spaghetti they're my not fans of dishes are... <laughs> no they are oh my goodness you are not kidding i think i'm sorry i interrupted you no you're fine but <laughs> i know y'all don't live in my house with me but christy who's my neighbor and, and she's here all the time and sometimes i'm there but mostly we're here she comes and she sees i make signs in my kitchen sometimes they're nice reminders to, for my kids my kids as in young adults and older teens to do their dishes and sometimes they're not as nice uh, someday someday we should do a video without actually cleaning up after them. Because most people would say, then don't do it and make them do it. But- I the, film in the kitchen. You film in the kitchen, we need to do it. So lots of, lots of times I come and I'm the one cleaning it up, but that's okay. They're not my kids. <laughs> so the sign right now is quite stern. It's a good sign. We don't have to go into this. We've talked about the signs We've, before. Yeah, and, and they don't seem to adjust my kids. <laughs> That's because we clean up after them because we have no choice. Right. So that's what I'm saying. Like we, we at some point should uh, film in the, the scattered remains of whatever they have done to your kitchen. <laughs> and then you can shame my children in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay. They, so they do love the one pots. They, they, they don't care about the one pots because let's face it, they're not the ones doing the dishes. <laughs> but I love the one pots. They love tacos and they love spaghetti. So this seems like yes. it's gonna work out and it does. I'm just gonna get to the end of the story and tell you like there's, spoiler alert, it works.